still in the process of getting our mind renewed. What do you mean getting your mind renewed? Romans chapter 12, right? It says, don't be conformed to this world. In other words, don't, your life should not look like the life of just some of sinner folks, people in the world. Your life should be different. It should look different. You should sound different. You should act different. You should talk different, right? Taking what is ours. Taking what is ours. So don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 there. Hallelujah. So the transformation of our life comes. Now you're new on the inside, brand new creature in Christ. But the change, the transformation of our life takes place as we change how we think. And if you've been here long, you've heard me say this many times. And if you stay around, you're going to hear me say it many more times. Right? That if a young man gets married and he continues to think for the first year of his marriage like a bachelor, he's going to act like a bachelor and marriage is going to be rough. The honeymoon will end sooner than it needs to. Right. How does a married man think? He thinks, I pick the seat up. I flush the toilet when I'm done, and I put the seat back down. <laughs> All right. A married man thinks, no, I'm not stopping for a burger on the way home from work. I'm going to eat dinner with my wife. Well, that's a change in his thinking. You don't want to be like Reverend Marty Blackwelder. I'm going to tell off on him. He'd been married and his wife wanted them to go on a diet. Isn't it funny, guys, how your wife wants all of y'all to go on a diet at once? So, you know, he loves his wife. So she's on a, she's gonna, he's going to diet with her. Except he had to go buy McDonald's on the way home from work, so he would stop there and grab a burger or something, because he's skin, already skinny anyway, right? He has a met, met, metabolism like, <laughs> so he'd grab something on the way home, and then he would eat with her. <laughs> now, don't tell him I told you that. No, but the point is, if, if you, guys, if you keep thinking like a bachelor after you get married, you're going to have problems. You have to change how you think. Yeah. And so that, that principle is true when you get born again. If you continue to think like you did before you were saved, you're going to continue to act like you did before you got saved. In other words, there won't be any transformation of your life. That is why so many Christians and people that you know, people that you work with, they got saved at one point in their life, but there's not really any evidence of it. Yeah. It's because they've not been taught. Their mind has not been renewed with the Word of God. Right. Yeah. And so they just continue to do the things they did before. Yeah. They act like they did before. And so they have marriage problems. Yeah. They have money problems. Right. Well, yeah. right. Ooh, that's good. So your paycheck is not the cause of your money problems. Can I just tell you the truth? The way you think is the cause of your money problems. Selah. So if your money problems are going to change... Listen, a million-dollar check from Elon Musk is not going to fix your problem. I haven't figured out how to sign that petition yet. Maybe some of you have. I don't know. Go for it. Seriously. Why not? Let's see. Just 
Pay your tithe on it. Yep. Honor God first. Right? You want His blessing on it. Uh, you honor Him first. No, if, you, if your money problems are going to go, you're going to have to change how you think. If you keep thinking the way you do, glory to God. I'm making a point here. Renewing our mind. So uh, it's always an issue because, and this is why we've been on this subject really for the entire year. Think about that. My pastor preached on the same thing for a whole year. <laughs> well, if y'all would get it, we could move on. <laughs> I'd be telling my minister friends, yeah, it's taking them a whole year to get this one thing. <laughs> We have to change how we think. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever should believe on Him should not perish. Jesus came and gave Himself a sacrifice once and for all. He doesn't have to continually be crucified every time somebody needs to be saved. Remember, he said, it is finished. Everybody say, it's finished. It's true. The work has been done. The price has been paid for our redemption. You know that's true. And so that's why 2 Corinthians chapter 5 down in the chapter, it says, we are ambassadors. And our job is to tell the world the good news. That, as one translation says, it was God personally present in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. God was in Christ. Reconciling the world to himself. Meaning Jesus paid the price for the sins of man, of all humanity, the pure spotless lamb of God, his precious blood paid the penalty. Glory to God. He, he went to hell. He suffered in our place. As the scripture says, the chastisement of our peace was on him. And then by his stripes, we were healed. He paid the price, the penalty for sin, for our healing. All He paid that all at once for all humanity at the same time. So when somebody needs to be saved, they need to be born again, become a child of God, he doesn't have to do it all over again. It's simply a matter of somebody telling that person, the price has been paid. God loves you. He's not mad at you. He's not judging you for your sin. All you need to do is believe on the Lord Jesus. Amen. Believe in your heart that He's the Son of God. That He came to this earth. He lived a sinless life, right? He died for us, spent three days in the grave. And on the third day, he rose again. Amen. Hallelujah. If you believe, if, and we tell him, if you'll believe that in your heart, and then it's not over there, is it? No. That's not the end. What else do they need to do? Yeah. Say with their mouth. Yeah. King James says, confess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Say it with their mouth. <clears throat> Say what you believe. And what happens? They're instantly translated by the power of God out of the kingdom of darkness, out, of, out from under Satan's dominion into the kingdom of God. Amazing. Supernatural. Incredible. There, we're, we're, we're zooming in on the principle here. So it was all done in Christ. And that's why, and we've talked about this, the Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O. Y'all remember that? We talked about this. We're, we're just, we're going over this again. Because 
Some of y'all have already forgotten about that. I'm talking about in day-to-day -day life. That thought never crosses your mind. As you're doing your life and paying bills and dealing with all the things of life, those thoughts, they're, they're, not, they're not there. Why? Because you've not renewed your mind. You're not keeping your mind renewed to the Word. There's life in those words. So that the Word... And the scripture says, you shall be saved. The word saved is that Greek word, sozo. Hallelujah. Come on, this is good, good news, y'all. Yeah. That word, what does sozo mean? Saved. What does it mean to be saved? That Greek word, sozo, it means deliverance, preservation, healing, soundness. Right? Deliverance from what? From all the power of the devil. Yeah. Satan no longer has any dominion over your life. Right. right. You know what healing means. Yeah. It's already provided. It's in. Yes. It's included. Yes. I, I made reference um, back when I talked about this before to an all-inclusive vacation package. Yes. Everything's included. Yeah. All your food and beverages, transportation, Everything you need, it's already, just show up with your bag. Right? right? Yeah. And you might have, maybe you have a badge or something, and it's been punched. Right. When I was a Rama student, uh, especially my first year, man, you're always kind of a little envious because uh, on, on the little badge, clip-on badge, they had little punches you know, September, October, November, and you, as you paid your tuition, you got that month punched. Wow. They punched that little, it was funny, it was a little, tiny little faith shield punch, like the Ram of Faith Shield, right? And it always felt good when you got that badge punch. You're like, whew, all right, I got another month. So, but then you'd be walking down the hall and you'd see somebody, and this is like in October, School year had just started, and you saw everyone was already punched. <laughs> and like, oh, man, that has got to be nice. You know, they're not thinking about, because I was. I, I was going to school, working part-time, and it was, you know, it's like, ah, you know, you got, you got to have gas money to get to school. You're in an apartment and food and all that and, and paying tuition. <laughs> I, I mean, April of my first year, I, I had taken a job in February, and it wasn't a lot of money. But by April, I couldn't get my badge punched. I had to sit out and missed a few days of classes because I didn't have my tuition money. So you understand what I'm saying? When you saw somebody with, in the beginning of the year, some students, right, the first week of school, Tick, 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 tick. They're all punched. Listen, Jesus already punched everyone on your badge. It's already been punched. Uh, paid, 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 paid. It's already been done. Glory to God. Say it's already done. Right. In Ephesians, the first chapter, it says he's given us. Everything, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, he's already given to us. It's ours. Amen. Click, Amen. click, 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 click. First Peter, or Second Peter chapter 1, he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Uh, look it up in your Bibles. You know, we put it on the screen, but it's more important that you read it in your own Bible and not, not just read it while you're sitting here. Everything that pertains to life and God, hath given, yes. King James, hath, H-A-T-H, or has, it's already done. When was it done? When Jesus paid the price. Right. Right. Paid the price for our healing. Pray, paid the price, redemption, prosperity, right? Already paid for. Paid in full, already taken care of. Well, pastor, if all that is already mine, tell me how do I get it? That's what I'm trying to do. Glad you finally asked the question. 
How do I get it? If it's already mine, how do I get it? Let me ask you a question. How did you get saved? How did you receive salvation? Let's not forget the first most important step. You heard the word of God. God's word is his will. Don't we call it the New Testament? A will and testament. You heard of a will? His word is his will. Right? So first thing you did, you heard the word of God. And when you heard the word, faith came in to your heart. Faith comes, Scripture says, now faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You heard the word, faith came in your heart. You believed. You believed, you heard about Jesus, and you believed. And then what? What did you do after you believed? You confessed. You confessed. Even though from a natural, logical standpoint, it didn't make sense. How can believing that and saying that change my destiny, change my eternity? This didn't calculate it. You did not figure, not one person in here figured salvation out. Now, if I do this and that and that, 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 that makes sense. All right. No. You simply believed in your heart the Word of God and simply acted on what you believed. We're talking about taking what is yours. So everything that is in the word sozo, preservation, soundness, Healing it includes provision for your life is in that word. Glory to God. It's been punched already. How are you going to get all the things that belong to you? You're going to, number one, you're going to find out what God says about it. Listen to me close. You can't just take my word for it. You've got to open your Bible. Remember the other week I said, no, it's really the Holy Ghost said, read your Bible. Yeah. I, I, I think we need to say it again. Some of y'all already forgot about that. You're, you're, you jump back into Monday, Tuesday, Monday through Friday, all that, and that thought is nowhere near you. <laughs> just when you're coming to church. But, but that, it doesn't count just when you come to church. It's all the time. Come on, I'm, I'm helping us. I'm preaching to me too. I have to do this. Right? You've got to find out if it's prosperity that you need. Faith for that is going to come from God's Word. Right. Reading the Word of God, getting it down on the inside of you, and you say, yeah, I believe that. I believe in my heart that Jesus, though He was rich, for my sake He became poor, so that I, through His poverty, might be made rich. Yeah, my God shall supply shall supply all my need according to his riches. My God shall supply. It's going to get down on the inside of you. What's going to happen? As you get God's word in you, your faith is going to rise up. Faith will come. But you're not done yet. You're not done yet. What else do you need to do? You've got to confess it. Even though from the natural... There's no reason to. Everything in the natural says, well, go find another job, get a second job, get a third job. Start looking for stuff around the house you can sell. 
All the natural things. Your head is going to be saying this. But what's in your heart? What does God's word say? You've got to say it. If you don't say it. The scripture says about Jesus that demons believe. Demons believe. But I tell you what they don't do. They don't confess Jesus is Lord. They won't do it. There's Christians that won't confess Jesus is my healer. They say, well, I'll believe it when I see it. Or they'll say, well, you know, whenever the Lord decides to heal me, I'll be healed. If it's His will, I'll be healed. That's the same thing as saying, if, if they said, you went to witness to somebody and said, well, if it's, if it's the Lord's will, He'll save me. Right. Is it going to happen? They can go and spend eternity in hell believing that same thing. Amen. That, that, that's a tragedy, isn't it? That is a tragedy when the price is already paid. To me, that's the greatest tragedy is somebody who dies and goes to hell and the price was already paid. That would be like as if I got my school badge and everyone was punched. And every month, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I'm just, I'm working overtime. I'm trying to get all the money I can. And the payment's due. And I'm just wringing my hands and worried. And, and, and somebody's like, dude, do you know what those punch marks mean? Do you know what that means? You understand? They'd be trying to enlighten me, saying, hey, look, it's already paid. That's what we're saying. It's already paid. You're not waiting on God to do anything. You're not waiting on God to heal you. Just like you're not waiting on Him to save you. Did He do it already? Did you believe? Did you confess with your mouth? You're saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I know this, we're, we're still back at the basics, but I'm like Tiger Woods. A hundred six-foot putts. Next one. Daily. Why? It's the basics. If you can't, what do they say? A, a golf saying, drive for show, putt for dough. That's where the win is in the putting. Right. The, the money is in the, making the putts. Right. Just the, the, the great drive, that's just for show. The money's not there. The money is on the green, putting it. That's why he would spend so much time putting it. Again and again, over and over and over. So don't, don't get bored or just think, oh, pastor's talking about this again. This is where your win is. This is where your success is. This is how you dominate the enemy in your life. In every area. Every area. This is good news. <laughs> Hallelujah. Something you can take to the house and begin to do. But you, you've got to... The scripture says in... in uh, Joshua, chapter 1, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. In other words, it's always in your mouth. Yeah. You shall meditate therein on Sundays while you're at church. That's not what it says. Day and night. Just constant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is just an opportunity. Y'all could do a little self-diagnosis here. Yeah. Donald's an auto mechanic. You get a car in, and you hook it up to the machine, 
You've got to diagnose what the problem is. You've got to figure out what the problem is before you can fix it. Right, so you can right here just kind of do a little Holy Ghost diagnostic if you're having difficulty in some areas. You know, you're, you, every time it comes to a hill, man, it just seems like you lose power. You know? It's like, well, what's the problem? The gas gauge says it's okay. What's my problem? Yeah, I had spark plugs that weren't doing good. They'd break down under the heat and the, you know? They'd start breaking down. They'd go, going up a hill. That was that white Explorer that we used to have, you know? Put a new set of plugs in it, right? But we had to diagnose what the issue is. You ought to be interested in diagnosing. Why are you? It's not because God hasn't done something yet. That's not what it is. There's gas in the car, right? But take the word of God and say, all right, this is where I need, this is what I need to do. I need some new spark plugs. I need to put a new fuel filter in it, right? Or he could probably come up with a bunch of other. Operator error. Operator error. You're driving a manual, and you don't know you're supposed to downshift. This growing up, there's one lady in the church. She had an old Dodge Dart. Three on the column, you know. And a uh, little um, straight six Mopar engine was popular for years, right? And instead of downshifting, she'd get the engine RPMs revving up real good and just kind of start slipping the clutch. And just smoke the clutch all the way up the hill. And so I don't know how many times my dad put a new clutch in that car for her. And I know because most of the time I was out there holding the flashlight for him. Handed him tools, yep. right? Because he didn't have a lift. He just did it in the driveway. Wow. Yeah. Right. So diagnosing the problem. There, there's, it's a relationship that we have, but at the same time, there's laws that govern yes. God's power. Yeah. Yeah. And when you know what that is, you can diagnose and say, all right, this is my issue. Yeah. I tend to complain when money gets tight. Oh, now there's a big problem, right? I, 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 keep, I keep saying I'm talking about the problem instead of saying what God says. Wow. So your destiny, your provision, your healing is right here. God, we were talking about dominion. God gave you dominion. Right. Means what you say. It's not what God says. It's not what God says. He gave dominion to you. It's what you say. So that's why. If we get God's word in our mouth and we say what God says, let me wrap this up real quick here. That's why Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, whosoever shall say. Right? He didn't say, whoever prays to God to move that mountain. Whoever intercedes and begs and pleads with God to get him to move that mountain. He said, whosoever shall Say, believe in his heart, not doubt, believe in his heart. The things that he says shall come to pass. He'll have whatever he says. That is a principle, a spiritual principle in the word of God. The world doesn't know this. So when you hang around the world all the time, you're going to think like the world. Which means you're going to act like the world. 
that means your life is going to tend to look like the world. You're going to have the same issues, the problems, the anxiety, the stress, the marriage problems, all the things that define, that you look at their life. Fear. Right. Oh, about the election and all the things. There's plenty of things to be afraid of. Right? But, as a child of God, it's in your power, in your authority. Number one, let's wrap this up right now. Number one, God's word. You have to know what God says. If you don't know what he says, you're not going anywhere. It requires his word to renew your mind. If you're not renewing your mind, your life's not changing. Amen. Amen. Renew your mind. Get in the Word. Find out what God's Word says. And it says meditate therein. In other words, you just don't read the Scripture once. Read it again right. and again yeah. and keep reading it. Get it down on the inside of you. Number one, get God's Word on the inside of you. Number two, believe it. Yeah. Just believe it. Yeah. Are there any believers in here? Yeah. Right. Whoever heard of an unbelieving believer? Right. Yeah, this is my dog, but my dog doesn't bark. I love the Pink Panther. <laughs> Does your dog bite? Nope. Dog tears the guy up. He said, I thought your dog didn't bite. He said, it's not my dog. <laughs> no, why do dogs bark? Because they're bark. We are believers. We believe God's word. Above and before anything else, I believe God's Word. I believe His Word before I believe symptoms. I believe God's Word before I believe my checkbook. Amen. I see the checkbook and I say, I believe you're about to change. <laughs> right. I believe God supplies my needs. Right. I get God's Word. I believe it. And then what do I do? I say it. And I continue to say it. And keep saying it. And whenever the thought comes to me about the situation, I say what God says. And part of saying it is thanking Him. Father, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise that you've already provided for me. Father, I thank you that your healing power is working in my body right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're mixing praise with your confession of what you believe. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just like we could say, Father, I thank you. I'm saved. Thank you that I'm your child. Yeah. We're not waiting until we get to heaven. That's right. Well, I'll, I'll praise him when it happens. So you're going to wait till you die? No, we thank him now. Why? Because we believe. The scripture says about Abraham in Romans, it says, he waxed strong in faith, giving glory to God. 99 years old, getting his wife pregnant. He, they just believed. They believed God. Wax strong in faith. In other words, that time from when God said it to the time that it manifests, he kept praising God. Lord, I believe you. Thank you for our son. Hallelujah. Giving glory to God. Every day. Every day, every day. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Have you been helped today? Yes. More than you know. That's right. Amen. Let's be a doer of the word. Amen. Let's keep our mind, let's keep our thinking right. You got to take this to the house. You have to take it to the house now. Don't, don't leave this message here. Hallelujah. We're going to keep ministering this along this line, helping y'all. And, and as you do it, and do it, and do it, you'll see life starts changing. Right? Uh, many times it's not an instant change because you've been going the direction you've been going for quite some time. This has been in that same rut for quite some time. And it's going to take a process. To, final illustration, and I'm done. I've got my truck out there. 
and it has the auto start stop. In other words, you come to a stop, it shuts the engine off. I do not appreciate that at all. I do not. Some vehicles do. Mine doesn't have a thing where you can permanently turn that off. That means every time I get in the truck and start it, I have to remember to hit that button then. Otherwise, I come up to the stop, the truck shuts off, and I go, ah. I got to hit that button. Well, because I've driven for so many years, never thought about anything like that before, it has been a process to remember when I start the truck to hit that button. When I start the truck, and I, I'm getting better at it. I, I'm pretty good now, but still sometimes I get going, I jump in and take off and pull up to the traffic light and the truck stops. Why? Well, I, I have to change how I think. With this here, it gets in a rut. And it gets in a rut in so many ways that you have, you have to purposely focus. All right. When it comes to my body, if I have pain, Every time I feel that discomfort, I make it trigger this. And I say, thank you, Lord Jesus. You redeemed me from the curse of sickness and pain. Jesus, you bore my pain. Let the, let the bad thing trigger the right thing. And before you know it, the bad thing is gone. Hallelujah. Works every time. Amen. Stand up with us.